Welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Films and Stuff. It is our weekly stream or skip episode. I'm Ethan and I've got Pete with me. Let's dive into it, Pete. Yeah, let's definitely do it. How are you otherwise? Everything is great. Should we do your patented 15 second recap of the rules of streamer skip? All right. Ethan has provided a list of TV shows he'd like me to watch. I have done the same for him. Every week we randomly assign each other one show to watch and we watch at least two episodes or 30 minutes if it's a feature length movie. And based on that, we determine if the show is worthy of being streamed or skipped. Lately, both of us have been on a little bit of a dry streak. We haven't had a a subscribe in in quite some time, huh? Yeah, it's been a while. Is that because we're becoming more esoteric in what we're assigning each other? Is it just random? Is it a lack of quality? What's your hypothesis on this? I think it comes down to just being random. The other reality is that The whole point of Streamer Skip is we put movies and TV shows on our lists that we would not normally watch ourselves. Yeah. So, for example, we're not going to put the latest Star Wars show onto a Streamer Skip list because we would naturally watch that anyway. We wouldn't need to watch it as a part of an assignment. Oh, yeah. We got to watch that. Yep. On that basis, I'm not terribly surprised that most of these are more misses than they are hits. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at it, your average rating is below a mooch. So you're leaning towards skipping more than you are towards mooching. And yeah. I am as well. All right. Without further ado, what was your assignment this week? What did you have to watch? So this week, I had to watch Justified City Primeval. Ooh. On Hulu? Or where is it? So it's an FX show. Okay. I think it's also on Amazon Prime. As with everyone else, watch it where you can. If you can, we generally will mark it down as to where we are able to watch it. We can't confirm that the platform we watch it on will be available to everybody else only because of the fact that we're international guys and licensing gets very complicated. Yep. In any case, City Primeval is a legacy sequel. Oh, really? Yeah. So about, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, I can't remember, maybe even 20 years ago, Timothy Oliphant kind of broke out in Justified, where he plays a U.S. Marshal based in Florida, and then he gets reprimanded because of a shootout and has to go back to his home state of Kentucky. Okay. He is basically a character that's a man out of time. He's a little old fashioned. He's like a Southern gentleman. He's like a cowboy. So he's like a 19th century lawman (laughs) in the 20th century. All right. He will not hesitate to use his gun to solve a fight, but he'll give you every opportunity in the world to stop that from happening. Okay. He's got a good heart, a good soul. But at the same time, he's like an old-fashioned Western cowboy in the sense that he's not afraid to bend the rules or to skirt the rules. Okay. Jack Reacher style. Kind of. Yeah. If you like Justified, this could be interesting. I really like Justified. I'm not a huge fan of City Primeval. Mm. The problem is Justified ran for, I don't know, like seven, ten seasons, whatever it was. And Uh over the course of that time, it was given the legs to have a villain that was really good because you can build up actors over years to give, you know, nuance and really build out and flesh out their characters. Yeah. In today's day, hardly any show gets that time. Yeah. Right. So instead of 22 episodes a season, now you're down to 10 episodes a season. Eight, (laughs) six. Yeah. And you're lucky if you get one season, if two, now the concept of the miniseries is becoming more and more prevalent. Right. Timothy Oliphant returns. This time they're in Detroit. He's got one trope, which I don't like. Again, that super bratty daughter who's a pain in the ass. Oh, no. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm out. We've seen it so many times, but I I yeah. just can't stand her. She's just god awful. Okay. Then you have a bad guy in Boyd Holbrook. So Boyd Holbrook as a whole, I don't mind him. I think he's great, but I hate him in this because he's a bad guy who wants to be a bad guy for the sake of being a bad guy. So he's like a cartoonishly evil bad guy. Oh, no. No depth, no nuance, no nothing. It's a little bit of like the same character he played in Logan, the Wolverine movie. Okay. Okay where he's just a bad guy. And that's fine for a sidekick, but that is not good for your main character. You want a little bit of depth. You want a little bit of nuance to why he's acting the way he does. Okay. And there is none of that here. He's just awful. I don't like it. The premise of the series is that while on summer vacation with his daughter. The brat. The brat. They almost get carjacked, but they don't realize, obviously, that he's a U.S. Marshal and he takes the the criminals down. Turns out that the criminal has an existing warrant in Detroit. So he takes the criminal to Detroit because he's still a U.S. Marshal. And while there, he gets roped into a criminal investigation. And he also has to stay there because his bratty daughter gets him in trouble with the judge. Okay. I hate his daughter. They're in a court. And she's listening to music out loud and being a total pain in the ass. Oh, my God. Not even realistic. Even for, like, the worst of bratty daughters. That's not even realistic, right? What happens is that judge gets murdered by Boyd Holbrook's character. So he's roped into that investigation. He's trying to bring them down. The long story short is that this is a mooch at best. Production values are very high. But the show does not have the charm that the original did. It feels a little too modern. You know, the original was set in Kentucky. It was, you know, a little bit of that Southern charm, a little bit of that, you know, Southern drawl, a little bit of that, you know, politeness, all of that kind of stuff. Here, everyone is cursing left, right, and center. It's a little harsher. There's a little bit more of an edge to it. And I think that's also because modern sensibilities everyone wants a little bit more darkness a little bit more edge right it's fine but it seems a little out of character for this guy Mm. so i'm not loving it i don't hate it i still really like Raylan givens i still like that you know he's a good guy in a bad situation yeah but it's just not my favorite this is a mooch i think that If you really like Justified, you should give it a go. If you've never seen Justified, don't start with Primeval. Go watch the original. Okay. So we learned something here. So that's a mooch. How about you? What did you have to watch? I had Reasonable Doubt, which I watched on Hulu. Okay. It came out in December 2022. Nine episodes. It's been renewed for another season. It is a legal drama, and you could... Best compare this to Suits. Meghan Markle and the whole cast, Harvey and Mike Ross. Yeah. So first of all, did you ever watch Scandal? Kerry Washington plays a character named Olivia Pope. Scandal is obviously based in Washington, D.C. Olivia Pope is like a fixer. And Kerry Washington plays that character extraordinarily well. It was created by someone called uh, Shonda Rhimes. So this is uh, one of the same writers from Scandal. That's important because if you've ever seen Scandal, or if you know the Kerry Washington, Olivia Pope character, you know a little bit about the style. It's apparently created by one of the writers from Scandal. Kerry Washington apparently is a director for at least one of the episodes. So it, it bills itself as a legal drama. It's set place in Los Angeles. And there's a few things that I have to say about it. So it's definitely a drama and it's definitely, and this is just factual, it's a black drama. All the characters are African-American. That's similar to Scandal, but very similar style. All the characters are extraordinarily beautiful. They're all very, very successful. They're all dressed impeccably. And that's why I say it's very similar to Suits because Suits was not 
a realistic legal drama. Everyone was always dressed well. They're all well coiffed. They all seem to have plenty of time, plenty of energy. They were never, you know, sleep deprived. They were never groggy. They were never pressed for time. They managed their day and they did it, you know, smartly dressed and quippy and, and everything. This is very, very similar. I have mixed feelings about the show. Just in terms of the plot, the characters, and the story, it's actually pretty good, I have okay. to say. Okay. It's it's compelling. What I don't like, again, this is just a fact, it makes a lot of what I consider a little bit racist anti-white statements. For example, she will say to her assistant, oh, do I really have to go to the white side of the office? Which I don't think is a nice statement. And I say that not being a white person. So I'm just objectively saying I, I don't think that's a nice statement. And she's joined this law firm. So they've given her an offer. She's a partner. She's accepted it. You would think that she would be happy where she's working. If she's not happy, she can join a different law firm, start her own law firm. Right. She's in a partner's meeting. And one of the partners suggests that she goes to meet with this potential client. And she says, and they're all stereotypical, very old white men. Okay. Right? Like as stereotypical as you can be. And she says, oh, are you saying that because I'm black? And they all become like really embarrassed and fumbling. She's like, ha, 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 I'm kidding. And I found like that's a really uncomfortable statement to make, and there's no reason to do it. And then there's a lot of the use of the N-word, which also makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And again, sometimes that word is a little bit, which is, I mean, obviously a very uh, sensitive word. Whenever that's used kind of like in a sports context or maybe a rap context, it seems a little bit more natural. For her and her girlfriends at like this very posh like brunch to just be using it to talk about their boyfriends or people they're dating seems a little bit inappropriate. For her to be referring to her like her younger son, who's a little bit bratty, that seems a little bit inappropriate. So I, I guess I have some tonal problems with this show. I don't think it needs to be divisive based on race. All the characters are very beautiful. I accept that they're all very intelligent. They're all successful. The show on its own merits is great. It doesn't matter, you know, what gender or what ethnicity or what background the characters are. I like them already. I'm accepting them for who they are. So I don't think it needs to make these little, you know, like racial comments. I don't think it needs to use the N-word I don't think that adds anything to the show. I think it detracts from it. And I think it only serves to kind of like make its audience and its viewers like a little bit more divisive. Even on Suits, which you could say Suits is a white show. I don't think it necessarily is, but you can say that. There are other characters who are not white, right? Jessica, who's the head of the law firm, is African-American, right? Yep. So, I mean, you could have this be a show and she could go to brunch and she could have at least one white friend right? There's no one. Anyway, it is what it is in terms of a story, in terms of the characters, in terms of the plot. As I said, it's actually quite good. I really don't mind it. I don't think it's a must subscribe, but I think it's it's a very strong mooch. I think it really is a pretty good, you know, like criminal drama. It's all the other stuff that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And to be honest, I don't really want to support Hulu by giving them the viewership numbers for a show that I'm a little bit uncomfortable watching and I think has some elements in it that I don't think are necessarily inclusive. So I'm going to rate this a skip, but I have to say I, I like what the, the creators have done for the story. Love all the actors and actresses. I think it's very well cast. Production value is very high. Everyone has great cars, great wardrobe, great houses, great offices. They spent a good amount of money on it and it shows, but for those reasons, it's it's just not for me. I don't want to spend more time watching it. Okay. I can understand that and I can actually appreciate that as well. So so that is what it is. That's our streamer skip. If we have time, my friend, let's do two things. Let's first assign ourselves what we're going to watch for next week. And then let's just take a few seconds or a few minutes to talk about what else is watching or what else is coming out, what else we're watching, what else we want to see. Because I think there's a bunch of new releases this week, right? That's exactly right. So for next week, you're going to be on Apple TV and yes. you are watching Physical. 
Rose Byrne. I guess. I don't yeah. know anything about this. All right. Okay. And I can get behind that. I am on Netflix, and quite appropriately, I will be watching Quarterback, given that the uh, oh, football season's finally. I'm so happy for you to be watching this. Great, great, great. Yeah, and then okay. I, I know that we can both talk about that in more depth next week because I know you've seen it and you're a big fan. Yeah, amazing. At the same time, since we are on a football streak, I would also encourage you to watch Swamp Kings, the new documentary that was released on Netflix, which is about the Florida Gators University American football team. Okay. And then... What else are you watching or what else should we be watching? we got to talk about the elephant in the room. We should. I've just started on Disney's newest show, Ahsoka. Yes, me as well. So the first two episodes are out. Yeah. We've both watched the two of them, right? Let me ask you, okay? And there's a reason I want to ask you specifically. Where are you on Ahsoka in terms of how do you find it? I have to say... I think Dave Filoni and Disney Plus have done this right. They are focusing on the right characters, which are relatively low stakes because you can't really mess them up or damage their legacy. And it definitely shows a different side of the post-Empire Star Wars universe. I think this is really the sweet spot. I think what they've done with Mandalorian, lesser to, you know, the book of Boba Fett, just because that wasn't so great. What they've done with Andor, what they've done now with Ahsoka. I think that's exactly the sweet spot for Disney+. Plus. They can keep turning these out. I think they're all very well done. And I think they give me good color and context into that universe without messing up the memories and the legacy that I associate with, you know, some of the original Star Wars films. Mm -hmm. The reason I ask is because so far, at least this looks more like a live action sequel to the rebels TV series. I watched Star Wars rebels. It's an animated show. Yeah. I loved rebels. I thought that was fantastic. I thought it was really, really good. I got the feeling like this so far has the hallmarks of it being more of a Rebels series follow-up. I did not watch Rebels, and I also didn't watch Clone Wars, and I should probably watch both, right? Phenomenal. Because I know that Ahsoka was actually created out of Clone Wars, right? That's right. That's absolutely right. She is Anakin's Padawan. I don't know if I caught it from Book of Boba Fett or Mandalorian, but I know that she... She said it here, which is a pretty big nugget, but I think that's not the first time that it was revealed. Yeah, it's certainly implied to here. I wonder if we're going to see Anakin Skywalker in flashbacks. What year is this taking place? Because I've tried to piece this together. And the way that I understand it is there's four, five, six. Six ends with the Battle of Yavin, right? And then after Battle of Yavin, it's Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka. Then after Ahsoka, it's The Force Awakens. Yes. So this takes place, I think, almost 10 years after, I guess, Return of the Jedi. So I read that The Force Awakens is 34 years ABY. That makes sense. So this is like 20, 25 years before The Force Awakens. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. So it goes Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, and then nothing's happened after that, at least in the, in the Star Wars universe. That's where it's ended is at the end of the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, exactly. Ahsoka is before the Force Awakens. So we could, depending upon when it is, is Admiral Thrawn mm-hmm. referenced in the Force Awakens? No, he's not. Okay. And I think that we're definitely going to see Admiral Thrawn in this. Yes, And my feeling is that Admiral Thrawn is the guy who basically creates the new empire. Yeah, I would expect that as well. His story is not clear to me yet. Like, I'm I'm not really clear about him. I'm not really clear about that who is Ezra. That all comes out from Clone yeah. Wars and Rebels, honestly. Oh, it does? That's why I asked. So okay. a lot of Thrawn comes out, especially in Rebels. 
So I just mentioned, okay, Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Ahsoka. Where is Clone Wars and Rebels in that timeline? So Clone Wars takes place, I think, between episodes two and three. Ah, uh, before Battle of Yavin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well before. That's Clone Wars. Yeah, Clone Wars is we're looking at a young Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're looking okay. at a young Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, so this is between episodes two and three. All right, so Clone Wars between two and three. And then when is Rebels? Between three and four. All right, so maybe that's my homework because I have to watch Clone Wars and Rebels. They're yeah. only one season each. No, my God. Clone Wars, I think, was like nine or ten seasons. <laughs> and Rebels was like five or seven. Five to seven ten seasons. seasons? Ten Animated seasons? For children, man. Well, children and me. Ten seasons of Clone Wars? Yeah, something like that. I mean, I don't remember how many seasons, but a lot. Are they 30 minutes or they're like one hour? No, no, 30 minutes. There were seven seasons of The Clone Wars and okay. four seasons of Rebels. All right. I can manage those two things. Yeah. Clone Wars especially, it gets way better towards the latter half. And Rebels starts off good from the get-go. Okay. Oh, it's a lot of work, but I can do it. Keith, for you and for films and stuff, I will do it. Yeah, you'll be happy you did. It's really good. I, I wholeheartedly recommend it. All right. So back to Ahsoka. Are you happy with the first two episodes? Uh, so far, I mean, I don't have anything too negative about it. I think it's fine. It's too early to tell. Look, as an actor, I'm a huge fan of Rosario Dawson. Yeah. So I get a little bit of bias there. I really loved the Rebels TV show. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see more of Hera, Syndulla, and their crew get back together. Yeah. I'm not 100% on board with Sabine Wren just yet. How did she not die after being stabbed through and through with a lightsaber? Yeah, I don't know. This is the first time I can understand in Star Wars canon that we have seen someone hit with a lightsaber through and through and not die. Oh, no. Remember in Obi-Wan, that woman gets stabbed with a lightsaber from Darth Vader doesn't die she doesn't die remember in fact you and i made comments about it back then as well the third sister or the fourth sister or whatever she was oh yeah you're right we made comments about it i remember that she wasn't yeah. killed by vader was she was it by vader or was it by the second the first brother or something right i don't recall but okay my understanding was once you got hit with a saber like you were dead yeah that's how i i mean you really diminish the value of a lightsaber if that's you know but i have to say like ahsoka is probably a little bit interesting where they for the first time as i recall they actually went into like the specifics of the design of sabers right ahsoka's robot had like this database of all of them and could be like oh well you know this design is associated with this guy and this design yeah. is like this there's got to be like a wikipedia entry out there that's identified all the different saber designs right there probably is yeah I would be interested in seeing that, actually. Like, I've kind of seen, but I haven't, like, not slow enough in any show or movie to actually see the differences between the designs. But I'd like to see even, like, all of Luke's sabers, Obi-Wan's saber. Like, and also, you should be able to trace them, kind of like serial numbers, right? Yeah. After Ben Kenobi died, do you recall what happened to his lightsaber? Don't, off the top of my head. And by the way, that's very instrumental. In A New Hope... When Darth Vader stabbed or killed Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi disappeared. Like, he didn't just fall to the ground. Remember, like, his cloak was empty, yep. and then Darth Vader was, like, stepping on it. That's the first saber death I think we've seen, right? Uh, yes. I mean, in terms of theatrical release, yeah. absolutely. I don't recall Luke ever picked up his lightsaber and took it with him. No, because he wasn't there. Right. He saw it from a distance, remember? Yeah. And then he like started shooting. I really want to know where that lightsaber went. Oh, a listener's got to be able to tell us that, right? It's a legitimate good question. Okay. So anyway, Ahsoka, now they're going to be released one a week, correct? Yeah, that's right. So we got six more weeks of this. You know, television and entertainment have changed so much. I think eight episodes is really better than a two or three hour movie. And I agree, like, sometimes you just don't have enough for, like, a 12-episode season or, I mean, 20-episode seasons are gone. But, like, I have to say, like, 8 is really, I'd rather see 10 or 12, but if you don't have it, 
do it like eight, but let's do like one a year. If Disney Plus and Dave Filoni can be turning out like one of these a quarter, I'd be really happy with that. The problem is, I think, what have we seen in 2023 so far? There was Mandalorian and now Ahsoka, right? That's it. But I have to say, like, if Disney Plus would do this every four months, I'm totally in. I think this is a great, great model for Disney Plus if they would do three of these a year. Oh, well, as long as they're of this quality, absolutely. So much so that I would suggest the DC. I mean, we just did our review of Blue Beetle, if anyone wants to go back and listen to that shit show. But I, I would say... Caveat, the episode is fine. The movie was the shit show, not the episode. 100% correct. You're right. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I would say, if we're just thinking out loud or workshopping here, maybe DC just needs a different model. Lucasfilms, Disney tried it with Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker, and you know the problems that they ran into, right? Oh, tell me about it. And then they pivoted a little bit and said, look, the stakes are too high. The Star Wars fans are too attached to these characters. They're nitpicking things like crazy. Let's take a step back. We've still got a great franchise, a great intellectual property. Let's go Mandalorian, Book of Boba, Mandalorian, Ahsoka. That's a better way to do it. Maybe DC needs to do something like this as well and take a step back and do like these mini series. They're clearly competing head to head with Marvel, which is of course running into its own headwinds. To their credit, DC has been very good about their TV shows. Yeah. I mean, the CW was practically a mini DC series. They had Arrow, they had The Flash, Titans, Legends of yep. Tomorrow. You know, yep. they had quite a few TV series that were running concurrently with the movies. But the yeah. problem was they were all in their own little world. Yeah. Those were also very teen angsty. Oh, yeah, you know? totally. One of the problems I think we had with Flash and Arrow is that people like you and I wanted the action, but they were really these teenage Riverdale, uh, no, Will uh, they, uh, Will Dawson's they? Creek yeah. yeah, kind of dramas. But I mean, having watched Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle would probably be much better as a series, actually. I can't speak for Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. Those are always going to be big screen. But for the rest of the universe, they may need to build out and do something different, you know? No, and you know what? Even with Batman, Superman, and all of them, they have enough ancillary characters in those universes that yeah. they could do it. I would totally be on board with seeing, and I guess that's the point with the new DC universe, but with seeing adventurers on Themyscira. You know, where you kind of have like a Xena warrior princess-esque vibe or, you know, about adventures in Gotham City as like a regular police officer. I don't know. The DC's got a lot of work to do to fix itself. I think the main thing is to get a couple of their movies that are good off and running, which they don't have right now. They don't have a good TV program. They don't have a good movie program either. Not just that. In terms of the movie program, they don't even have any continuity. They absolutely have to start from scratch with it, like each character now. Yeah, absolutely. I just think that DC needs to rethink, I'm going to call it like their presentation strategy. And I'm just not sure that they should be going for feature film, feature film, feature film. I mean, maybe they need to also like consider something of a hybrid model, but... Whatever they're continuing to do, I mean, we know that entertainment is going to keep on evolving, right? Five years ago, it was all about movies, and then it kind of evolved more into streaming. And now maybe, I mean, if DC and James Gunn want to be ahead of the curve, they may need to think of some type of like hybrid, which is, you know, the whole buildup is these 45-minute episodes, and then the finale, so to speak, is kind of like the two-hour on-screen blockbuster. You could watch the big screen blockbuster stand alone. My mom, my brother, they'll still kind of understand the story. But you and I will have watched eight weeks of backstory to how we got to, to that main two hour kind of like ending, right? That ties in their streaming network and their big screen together. The hybrid strategy, I think, really is a good idea, but I think it's predicated on having an IP that's resonating overall. It's working really well for Star Wars. 
in general, I would argue, because the IP is so loved, right? Everybody loves Star Wars. And whether you like the movies or not, the especially the recent ones, you still love something about Star Wars. At the moment, the DC universe is so flipped upside down and it's so yeah. in plus. So disjointed. There's no clear vision as to what the DC universe is. Well, by the way, that is a true statement. It's also a true statement to say that was true before they hired James Gunn. And James Gunn was supposed to fix all this. Yeah. And he came in and he made all these hard choices. But despite all those hard choices, despite all the criticism, all the financial pain, we stand here one year later and actually not a lot is much clearer. He's tried to fix things, but things still are not clear going forward. He should have just cleaned the slate. He should have canned Blue Beetle. He probably should have canned Flash, although I really say that unhappily because I liked Flash. He should have canned Shazam. He just should have said, we're starting entirely over. We're going to take a big pause. We're going to reboot. This is who we are. I totally agree. But instead, he flushed some of it. He kept some of it tried to kind of convince us that there's these two different tracks. You know, there's kind of like this multiverse and then there's a separate one-off verse. I'm still standing here today. And what's on the horizon? Where are the, you know, the big things, right? There's a new Superman cast. There's still Aquaman coming out, which is a legacy film from Snyderverse, which yeah. doesn't make sense, right? We think that there's no more Wonder Woman or it's going to be a new Wonder Woman. We've kind of got Supergirl now. It's still not clear to me one year later. Yeah, I don't think that Supergirl, Sasha Kaye, I think she's not going to be involved either. I have to say, I didn't dislike her. I don't actually have an issue with Supergirl. We've seen Supergirls before. They've always been relatively well-received. DC does need a female heroine, especially if we're going to be losing Wonder Woman, which, to be honest, we should. Gal Gadot can't continue to play that forever. It may be time to infuse someone new there, but I just don't know where I am with DC. I have my own issues with Marvel. I think Marvel is straying further and further, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to have their own challenges in the future, but at least you know where you are with the Marvel universe, you know? Yeah. There's a clear history. And if DC is going to start over, the best case scenario for DC, I guess in their own head, is they say, hey, let's start over. We're 17 years and 25 films behind Marvel. But if we do everything right, we can recreate that same thing. And they're saying, hey, we're 17 years away from creating the same success that Marvel has. That model is not going to work anymore. Yeah. The days of me and you going to see Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Avengers 1, Avengers Endgame, and so forth, that just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So they need to come up with a different strategy. And if it's not going to be a big screen strategy, then it needs to be some type of hybrid strategy. So I'm really not sure why they don't get a good series out there. Should have made Blue Beetle a series. A really, really enjoyable, happy series that gave us like all a good feeling. And they should start with all these kind of like minor characters that are not ultra crime fighters. Again, if you have a cage match, some superheroes are stronger than others. And there's some people who are not as strong. Blue Beetle probably is not the strongest. That's the thing, right? In this movie, they kind of made him look like he was able to do anything. We're talking about Blue Beetle, but it's fine. A beetle is not something that can soar into space. A beetle is something that can like buzz around a little bit, right? So show that, look, you can't go into the atmosphere. You can like kind of hover a little bit, but you're not able to get like the altitude of going to the top of a building or the edge of space. Yeah, I mean, look, it didn't seem like he'd had many... He didn't have any weaknesses. Weaknesses. Okay. Anyway, this is a long patented diatribe on tangent. Streamer Skip, but our tangents also come up with some good ideas. And I think the point is, let's tie this back. What Disney Plus has done well with Star Wars after some really tough years and some tough decisions, they've actually got a good strategy that we've seen with Andor, Mandalorian, now Ahsoka. Yeah. Very, very decent, actually. You and I are huge Star Wars fans. We're talking about like different lightsaber models. We are behind the strategy that they've now done, which is lower the stakes, increase the volume and the frequency, and let's still talk about the Star Wars universe. That's good. And I think that what we've seen with DC is, hey, 
maybe our strategy isn't the right one, but you need to come up with something else because just hoping and praying for, for big blockbusters is absolutely not going to work unless they've got a streaming strategy that coincides with it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. All these things come down to strategic management, and yeah. I don't think they've got that vision in place. Or if they do, look, to be fair, Gunn hasn't really been given any time to do anything yet. So the next two years are going to be make or break for him. I agree he hasn't had time to put out content, but the content he has allowed out yeah. has not clarified the situation. Yeah, it's only muddied the water. You're absolutely yeah. right. That I agree with. If you'll recall, that was also one of the biggest gripes I had with him initially was him talking about all these movies, about how good they were and about how they were going to continue releasing them. Yeah. And they've been anything but. And I think the second part of that is it would be different if someone said to us, look, we're a studio, we've still got to pay the bills. We understand you've got to pay the bills, but none of these are actually making money. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't seem, right? I mean, they would have been way better off getting the tax write-off for all of these movies. Or they'd be way better off saying, we'll put it on HBO Max. Max. exclusive, yeah. Yeah, and we'll, we'll make it a Max exclusive, or we'll divide it into five 30-minute pieces and put it on Max one a week. Yeah, something like uh, that. It's bad either way, but definitely releasing them has made it, I think, more bad in terms of the messaging. And the second part of that is it's decreased our enthusiasm for future stuff. I mean, James Gunn's reputation has already taken a hit with me. I know he's a good director, but as like no. a president of a studio, no. his credibility has taken a massive hit with me. Yeah. If we were to see nothing from DC for two years... And then they'd come out with the new Superman. I think we'd be pretty amped. Yeah. Now, having seen Shazam, Black Adam, Blue Beetle, probably a miserable Aquaman, how amped are you for like the new mm. rebooted Superman? Probably like, oh my God. Yeah. Didn't Zero? we just get through like five terrible movies? Like, let's yeah. not do this again. I'd say that like you're hurting future openings, box office openings as well, by putting out all this half ass stuff. There's only so much that James Gunn's name as a director will do. And beyond that, now you're asking for a lot. Okie doke. Fans, let us hear from you. Come on, give us some Instagram comments. We love them. Tweet at us at FNS Podcast. You can DM us on Instagram at Films and Stuff Podcast. You can email us aloha at Films and Stuff Podcast.com. But as mm -hmm. always, Reach out to us by commenting below, liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and then hitting that notification bell. Hit the bell. We love the bell. All right. That is our weekly stream or skip. We'll call it stream or skip plus this week because we gave you guys <laughs> a few tangents. No additional charges. Join us next week. Pete, recap. What do we have assigned for each other? I've got quarterback on Netflix and you've got Physical on Apple TV Plus. Rose Byrne in physical Apple TV Plus. I'm so excited having watched Platonic, which I thought was amazing. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Pete, thank you for your insightful comments as also, as thank always. Thank you, Ethan. We'll see you guys next week on Films and Stuff, Stream or Skip. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. I know. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute.